What what episodes were these? Six and seven? Five and six. Five, Five and, and six. six. I got it. I got it. I just went through it. What you watching? Just between you and me. What you streaming on your TV? Let me see. What you watching? Action, drama, comedy. What you streaming on your TV? This is the Rubber Squid Podcast. Brought to you by our friends at BetSafe.net, where we recap episodes of the uh, uh, the popular uh, runaway hit Squid Game yes. from Netflix. I will say this is episodes five and six, as uh, Stoff was saying. Lester's about to do his uh, highly anticipated weekly recap. I will say one of these episodes was my favorite episode of the entire series. Really? We'll get to that in a second. But Lester, take it away. What, what happened in episodes five and six? Well, last we left off, James and boys and our listeners... We had a tug of war that was a cliffhanger. We weren't sure what was going to happen. Our mm. team of misfits, as Stoffus has named them, uh, you know, featuring uh, three three women and seven men, uh, decided that they were going to. They, it looked like they were going to lose. And what they decided to do is take three steps forward, and then try to throw the other team off. And the cliffhanger was them doing that. So we get back to the resumption of this of the series in, in episode five. They've taken these steps, and sure enough, it's worked. Suffice it to say, they eliminate the other team, and they live for another day. Great, fine. Um, so they all go back to their their, their barracks and whatnot. And uh, you know, of course, again, there's always this impending threat of being attacked at night. So. They decide that two people are going to stay up at a time and whatnot. While they're having, uh, while while uh, our main character Ji Hung is is is, uh, is is keeping watch, he has a flashback to a labor dispute where one of his colleagues is actually killed. So I think they're setting something up, or maybe they're just trying to get inside of the mind of the character. But certainly, we have to be aware that something is up with with with, with him, and potentially uh, that we're going to find out something more. Uh, that's I will just, point just out one second. Well. Just one, one. I got confused when I uh, when I watched that episode initially. I thought that the guy who got killed in the labor dispute was the other guy in the game, the financial guy. Oh, uh, just just because you know how you just kind of see his face. It wasn't him. Man. It's kind of blurry uh, and stuff. Yeah. No, I don't think that's him. I think that's something I, no, that just uh, happened to another coworker. No, it, it would make oh. no sense. As, as Lester said, it would make no sense. But I kind of thought it was him, which was unless uh, the character was all in his mind. Like a, we said, I see dead people thing. Or if the whole oh. show was in his mind, that it might be revealed That's... in episode nine. It better not. So you saw you 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 saw it saying <laughs> woo. I'll kill, was, I'll uh, kill was, you was, for was making killed. us watch it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to saying woo in a second. It was saying, it was the, it was the it was the dream of an autistic child. No, what was show? That was Saint Elsewhere. Saint Elsewhere. Yeah. That <laughs> seriously was how they did it. That was the ending of Saint Elsewhere. Was it? It was. Uh, it ended with some snow, and then you saw the uh, one of the characters had an autistic child, and you saw him like the snow globe panned out to him, and the whole entire eight seasons of the show oh, was created in his mind. Because because did, wow. did Newhart do that too? Newhart, I think, did the same. But Newhart did it in a like it was Newhart. It was funny, so you got away. With oh, that, okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Lester. Uh, back yeah. back. No, no. Yeah. Well, well, since we're talking about these things, the all-time best for any show is the entire series series of uh, season of Dallas being a dream because pa- Patrick Duffy comes out of the shower. Yeah. yeah. That Remember was, that? That was I insane. Don't, no. Like writers was, just run out. Of, they just run out of ideas, right? Well, it's not that. But what the hell happens, they killed off the most popular character of the show and the ratings took a nosedive. Oh, so they brought yeah. him back. Yeah. Hilarious. By saying the whole show is a dream. We should, the at whole, the, the end, series. at the end, we should uh, maybe do a... Uh, We'll go into what our favorite finales are, and we'll see if the Squid Game finale lives up. Oh. Although, is Squid, is Squid Game coming back next year? Ooh, uh, yes, it, it is. Is well, season seven of the Rubber Boots podcast just a dream? I thought you were going to say <laughs> seasons four through seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking, I, mean, I don't want to jump around too much, but um, if we if we continue on the recap of this of these of these two shows. Our cop, our renegade cop, who's inside, he manages to to uh, witness the whole uh, organ harvesting operation, and somehow, um, sorry, I'm sorry, he he witnesses that and is actually about to dive with uh, one of these guys that's going to take these these uh, these organs to the mainland. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't remember what happens, how he gets caught, 
but he eventually has to reveal that he is not uh, number 29. Well, Can you way, speak to that, Saf? Yeah, yeah, the way he gets caught is, for me, the whole cop thing, and I, we talked about it a little bit in the last uh, last week, the cop's really like kind of getting away with it the whole time. And in this episode in particular, he clearly doesn't know what's going on. He's asking so many questions yeah. about stuff that the other guys he think he's know. done a million times. Yes, I, ju- I just don't understand. And then finally, when they get to that loading dock, the guy pulls a knife on him because he, I guess he asked about the VIPs, mm-hmm. uh, which is the first time we hear about the VIPs is when they're going down into loading dock right. and there's a bomb set up there. And when the cop looks at it, the other guy just says, leave that alone. That's for the VIPs if they ever have to escape the island. That's so, a teaser. That's a yeah. teaser for an upcoming episode. Oh, good. Yes. yes a little. Yeah, which I believe, is again, called, I believe the episode is called The VIPs. Oh, because I, I really I really glossed over that point. I didn't really lock in on that oh, being important. Well, oh, so the, <laughs> I think the VIPs will be important. So that's how it happens. Uh, the guy uh pulls the knife on him and says why are you asking about the vips at mm-hmm. which point the cop uh reveals that he has a gun and he pulls it back on the guy uh yeah he's basically he's looking for his brother uh he tries to get some answers out of the guy ends up shooting him and he think he thinks that guy killed his brother because yes. there was somebody who had a kidney transplant correct. which his brother had had right lester yes yes, yes correct he, he feels so he, he gets into that uh, but okay. um before i believe it's be- is it before or after he 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 no, he after he kills that uh, the, the 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 one guy, he somehow and again th- by this point, I think they they are alerted to the fact that the, the guy who's running uh, the the Squid Games in that particular area, he is aware of this organ harvesting thing the whole time. Somehow he knows uh, because of what happens transpires in the organ room of uh, the doctor who uh, was performing the transplants. He basically has had enough. He snaps. He kills one of the guys in there, and he runs out of the room. And uh, basically, uh, it turns into this massive chase scene. Somehow, they don't get seen through the security. I don't get that. <laughs> but this massive chase chase scene. They end up in this one room, this big room where it's a, it's a game room. We don't know what the game is, but uh, essentially, there's a standoff. The doctor agrees to come back with the guard, but then the guard stabs him. But then into the room walks the the, the, the main guy whoever is the the, you know, the, the master of, of all of this and basically everybody is killed Quaid, I, have a, I got a question though I, I miss Lester I, I didn't get or I missed the part about the uh, I didn't think that the big head guy knew about the organ harvesting he didn't did he he did he reveals he did. it when he's uh, well he kind of says basically he goes I don't care what you do with the organs burn them sell them or eat them he says something to that mm-hmm. effect so he's aware mm-hmm. that there's an organ there's something happening with it the problem he has with them harvesting the organs is that it gave an unfair advantage to the doctor to the doctor because he yeah knew mm-hmm. what the games were and that's why they killed but, the and they killed right him. but he he just found out about it now he just in this episode no, 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 the, way he, the way he kind of the way he says I don't care what you're doing with the organs I guess we don't know if he knew about it before, but I think it kind of the the feeling I got from it was like he he's aware that these things go on under his watch. Yeah, I I, so I didn't I, get I that. Think, I I think it's kind of uh, like the same way where he doesn't kill if they he doesn't care if they kill each other in 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 the uh, in the bunks and whatnot. He doesn't care because it's everybody's on the same. You've got the same advantage. Everybody's I on the same level. I think also part of it is as long as he doesn't know exactly what it is. Like if you keep it out of his sight, it seems that like it's kind of okay. Yeah, it just kind of kind of seems so, to be their approach to running things there. And harkening back to that word, harkening like that, uh, harkening well, back uh, to an, a previous episode where the two that where uh, what's the, what's the name of the of the of the uh, tattooed guy again? Anyway, I don't know. I don't know the names girl. of any of the Do- characters. Doc yeah. Su. Yeah. <laughs> Doc Su. Doc Su. Doc Su. Uh, when he's having sex with a girl, I I think it's 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 fair to assume that they see this and they don't care. Let them do yeah. whatever yeah, they yeah. need to do. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that's fair to assume. So anyway, but um, the biggest revelation from from that episode is that our runaway cop manages to, to escape up into the upper echelon of of the Squid Games, and he gets into the quarters of the again this this main guy, the guy with the black mask. And he discovers that there are records for the Squid Games going back 30 years. So this has mm-hmm. going on, been going on for quite, some, quite a long time, 30 years. And he discovers that his brother, whom he's looking for, won the Squid Games in 2015, which begs the question, if you won that much money, why are you going back? 
You know <laughs> what I mean? He must be greedy, or you're a gambler, or something like that. But his, like you win the Squid Game once. But do we know if he his went brother's back? not back in the game? We don't know. We don't know anything about his brother. Where he is? I, I think what we're finding out is that he found that card in his brother's apartment, but we don't really know when. Because that that the the year thing kind of threw me too. It's because initially we didn't we thought his brother was just missing now, but now it appears he's been missing for five years. Three years, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, see, that's the that, that I don't I don't feel that way. I feel like you I think feel he like maybe we're gonna find back. that. I yeah. think he went back. Yeah, that's who do you, I, who do, you I think do you guys think the brother? Who do you guys think the brother is? If there's going to be a reveal coming up, if the brother is to be revealed in the show, I I think uh, he might be one of the guards, or Luffy? he or he's the main guy, Lester. He could be. I I was thinking he might be the main guy. No, the main. I think the main guy is a white guy. We kind of saw that, don't I we? Feel I feel I have so much. I have so point. much knowledge. Well, but I, the the main part, I don't think for me, it's not just the brother that's revealed. It's the fact that every year there seems to only be one winner. Yeah, the brother, really guys, is the old man who is what? aged. <laughs> He's aged in an aging, a reverse Benjamin Button aging machine <laughs> that is revealed in episode eight. Hey, nice. Mm. We'll okay, so speaking old, of the old no, man. but there, there is old, like initially prior to this, we thought that there would be multiple winners. Looking yeah. through the mm-hmm. records, it looks like there's only the one. So yeah. I think that that becomes important. A important point. Important so the last point. Which is, game, which is, the last game must be a winner take all. Well, I would I would think so. It's a, it's and only then one what person, happens I mean, to the win? Now the question is also what would happen to that solo winner if his br- cop brother can't find him and he has all this money. So the plot thickens. Maybe they go to a different island. Yeah. Six, so that's murder island. Of, uh, yes. That's the end of, of episode five, essentially, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, so right. let's get to episode six. Episode six, I think for me and for many people, it's probably the hardest episode to watch psychologically. Best, the best, um, the best episode of the series. Okay. Well, well thank really? you again well, for thanks, man. Well, I guess it's we'll really just oh, sorry. <laughs> it just gets better after that. Yeah. No, I meant you're right. No, you're right, Lester. Like I meant that. It's the hardest to watch, but from a yeah. pure television standpoint, afterwards, doesn't that make it incredibly impactful emotionally? Okay. So, right? um, so basically, now, and I'd like to point out before this that our 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 uh, our Ji Hung, uh, Ji Hung is our main character. He and the old man really get close. Uh, in this episode because unfortunately the old man starts to have some issues with his brain tumor and whatnot mm-hmm. and um basically uh jihan takes care of him you know you know make sure he's he's as comfortable as possible but unfortunately uh when the guards come after after all this stuff has happened it's unfortunate that they go to, the, to wake the old man up and he doesn't want to get up he doesn't want to get up and, he, and they they uh, pull the sheets off and it's revealed that he's soiled himself. He's wet his pants. So mm-hmm. Jihan is very, uh, again, very respectful. Pam gives him his his uh, jacket to cover up the stain yep. and whatnot. So anyway, they're all hoard, her, herded into this room where they see the two guards and the doctor are strung up, basically. And they say, listen, um, we people have been getting out of hand. And they essentially, the leader apologizes for this uh, insurrection because- well, he apologizes again, for it being not fair. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So he's still always but, trying to present this thing that, even though this might be immoral, they're trying to keep some sort of fairness within this game, which is I, really in keeping with yeah. with mafia, yeah. right? If you think about yeah. the mafia, there's certain rules. There's things you do and things you don't do. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I was just going to say, Lester, you're right. I think that entire episode is kind of slow after the, um, besides the cop chase after the whole tug of war game but i think if you think about the net it's all a setup for the next it's all character development to the next episode all you see is the bonding of those relationships mm-hmm. between these various people which sets mm-hmm. up for the marble game you're about to tell us about okay so yes so the next game is the marble game and so they are uh hoarded herded into this room and they're asked to get, get into teams of two and of course, all the speculation is, what's this game? Blah, 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 blah. What are we going to be doing? And how are we going to be able to team up to you know, advance to the next round? So it is revealed that it's a marble game. And each contestant is handed a, a bag of 10 marbles. And the object is to take uh, all, to get all your opponent's marbles, stand up with all the marbles. That's how you win the game. So at that point, it's, it's actually, you're teaming up with somebody who you think is going to be your partner and you realize immediately that one of you is dead after the end of this game. And of course, uh, our, our hero, Ji-Hun, 
and uh, and our, our old man team up. Sang Wu teams up with Ali. The two ladies uh, uh, from yeah. October War they team up. It's important to note uh, that the one woman that sleeps with uh, with with the gangster, she is actually the odd person out, um, and the she's dragged out of the, the room. It is assumed that she's killed, but I don't think she's killed. I think she's still alive. Mm -hmm. That's what oh. I think. I'm a, James, don't say I, I, anything. I think, James. I think James don't say anything. I think so too. And that, yeah, the I reason I, alive. the reason I think she's still alive is after they uh, obviously she stays in that room because she can't find a partner. Uh, they mm -hmm. cut to the uh, uh, Doc Su, the criminal with the uh, tattoos, and he says something to the effect of, "I'm happy I'll never have to see her again," which I felt yes. was very foreshadowing it that very she'll likely determine sure, his fate sure. at some point. But. And I'm gonna make a prediction right now. I believe he is going to meet his demise at her hands somehow. That's what oh. I think. Interesting. That's what I think. I really feel that's going to happen. But James, don't say anything. James is. So like, anyway, uh, why am I even on this pod? <laughs> <laughs> hey, no one told you to watch ahead. He, she, no, well, he, he watched the whole series before we even talked about this. So I, I, I understand. <laughs> Only uh, reason this pod is on is because I watched this damn series and told you to watch it. <laughs> So, sure. um, so anyway, we, we get into several games of marbles. And again, um, there you go. Uh, we, uh, so let's start, let, let, I've been talking about Sang Wu and Ali. So they partner together. And of course, again, it's a terrible thing. They, they, they realize that, uh, again, one of them is going to die. So anyway, they play the marble games and sure enough, Ali wins. Okay. So Sang Wu is going to die. And, and, um, uh, Sang Wu had one marble left. Yeah. And one marble left, and, yeah. and they Sang Wu at, at that point starts to turn the tables and says, "Oh, we're gonna get out of here, and I have a plan, and we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this." And stupidly, and I'm I'm one of those black guys. Don't do it, man! Don't do it, you fool! <laughs> 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 so I didn't Ali, see it coming. <laughs> so Ali decides he's gonna go in with this guy, and they're gonna get out somehow, and ah. Uh, Ali's sure just enough, too thanks. loyal, eh? He's just a loyal, he's, yeah. loyal, loving guy. And he, Ali's you know, too loyal, I, and Sang Woo knows it, and he's too, uh, he's too and listen, smart, you know, smart in a way. He's too ruthless in a way. I mean, yeah. Well, look, I mean, this is this is look. I mean, we're, we're, essentially, what we're talking about here at this point is Survivor, mm. but it, with a very, very drastic consequences. So basically, Sang Woo tricks Ali and steals his marbles, and Ali gets killed, and Sang Woo moves on. Why don't we take these one at a time, like to interrupt mm -hmm. the recap so yeah. we can talk about them. Um, like you're pissed off at saying Wu, right? For doing this. Like that's a it's cheap not. ass thing it's, to do. It's, all, it's also not the first time he's acted this way throughout the Correct. Season. He's developed but this as a pattern. If this is a life or death situation, mm -hmm. aren't you like, okay, so we're in the, we're in the squid game together and I draw stuff and Lester and Puffy. Like we all love each other, but yes, you got to live in any means you can. So I don't know. Or do you just, do you just accept would Lester Puffy, would you be able to accept your fate and die? Or would you do anything possible to live, to get home to your children and your rebounder? I, I would like <laughs> to say that I would um, die gracefully. <laughs> yeah. you but, would die. Uh, I might I have see Lester. Lester's some got rocks in my pocket. Lester would die gracefully, Puffy. You would do whatever. I would, do, I I would go through the five stages of uh, grieving pretty quickly. That would be, <laughs> Listen, I would, there would be I, some I would begging like involved. Believe, All in I one. Like, I would like to believe that I would lose gracefully. Uh, uh, and, and speaking to that, I mean, there's the two women that, that are together. It's it's our antagonist who's the pickpocketed, the pickpocket, and, some, and the other woman uh, that's there. And I don't know what mm -hmm. their names are. But anyway, they actually bond somehow throughout this cool whole thing and they decided that they're gonna by the way they have 10 minutes to do this i think in the the, the game yeah half 10, an, hour, 10 half an hour i think oh, okay, 10 sorry, half, half an hour yeah. oh, okay half an hour so anyway they decide that they're gonna prolong it as best as long as they can they start talking about things and they decide that they're gonna take a play a winner take all game whoever throws their their mob or closest to the wall wins so uh i believe it is the uh, no it is for 100 percent uh, again, the woman's the pickpocket. She goes first, and she she makes a, good, a decent throw. We and always did that with woman, hockey cards, eh? We always did yep. that with hockey cards. One hundred percent. Yeah. So, so it's time for the second woman to go, and she basically drops her marble at the, mm -hmm. the start. And uh, she gave up her life. That was a she gave up her life. She basically says, "Look, we talked, and you have more to get out of here for than I do." 
you know that's and, what and it's that's, that's heavy, what I think. That's what I think that uh, Lester would do. Lester would do for us. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, you, you do have to look at it. Uh, she makes that choice because she has nothing. Yeah, she has exactly. Nothing to go home to, and she realizes that this other girl is trying to pull her family out of North Korea. If we yeah, killed exactly. off Stoff, by the way, hmm. then we wouldn't have a podcast the, anymore. Plot, so the plot. The plot. Yeah, so I would sacrifice. Those, those organ life. thieves would be disappointed. Yeah. I would <laughs> sacrifice. I would a lot of damage to this body. I would ask. Uh, I would ask Puffy. <laughs> They'd be like, "There's nothing in here. There's nothing in here. He ruined okay. it all." Exactly. So, <laughs> do you um, imagine let's, let's that? Ugh, God, what is this? That's the worst let's liver move. I've ever seen. They're Sorry. like, he actually died of natural causes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lester. Go ahead. So let's move on to Duck Sue and one of the guys at his gang. Now, they. Uh, but this is this 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 is the, the the most fun one of the whole thing, actually, in, in my opinion. Because Duck okay Sue basically, <laughs> what's that? Because you're okay with either one of them dying, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I, I am. I am. But yeah. here's the thing, um, Duck Sue, um, basically they play their marbles, and he loses. And all the while that they're playing, his other henchman, let's call him that, is extremely arrogant, saying a lot of stuff that he would never say in the outside world of this guy, because this guy would just wring his neck and kill him. And, so and anyway, that, guy, lo- that guy took acting lessons from the main character in episode one. Like everything <laughs> with him was like, like a little oh, over the top. Wow. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, Especially the sweating. Like, hey, buddy, yeah. Yeah, the sweating was excessive. I know, like he was just like, but anyway, yes, Duck Sue wins, uh, loses the game and basically somehow coerces the guards to let him have another chance because there's still times left. So, they decide that they, they're going to dig a hole and whoever throws the most marbles into the hole okay, so wins. If we could stop there for a second, because this was the thing. Uh, basically, Doc Sue felt that he was about to lose. He was down to his last couple of marbles and mm-hmm. he felt that it was unfair that the other guy chose the rules of the game. And so he changed the game completely, but he changed it to a game where he put all the marbles back in play again. Yeah, to me, like by playing that second game with the dugout hole, they completely negated the first game, which made no sense to me. Well, I don't, I don't understand it either. Well, the other guy was just stupid, basically, right? Yes. Well, it wasn't the other guy; it was the guard. It wasn't the guy? The, was the guard, yeah. The exactly. guard led him like, to, to me, change the game. Yes, and and I don't, I don't understand oh. how that happened. I don't get that. Because if you're losing it, of course you're you're gonna. Uh, if you're losing the game, why not switch to the rules where it puts you at a not an advantage, but you still have an equal chance to win, essentially. By the way, did they ever did they ever say in the episode, because uh, I can't remember, uh, if you could just, like a guy like that, like that thug, uh, Duck Sue, couldn't you just beat the guy to death? No. Or did they don't, say don't you, you don't do that? When, uh, uh, because when um, uh, Songwu bet- betrayed Ali, he almost got physical with him and the guard pulled the gun off. Oh, him. right. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. I forgot mm-hmm. that. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. anyway, uh, Sung Woo ends up winning, right? Lester and the other guy, which we knew yeah. was going to happen, basically. Well, we the other guy knocked so, Sung Woo's marble in. Duck Su. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this Duck is the Su, last sorry. toss. Duck and Su, he's, got, he's all arrogant. You know, it's just like, you know what? You know, it's like, you remember Batman, where the criminals would try Batman up with some absurd <laughs> killing thing. <laughs> and he'd leave. <laughs> I've got you now, Kip Crusaders. <laughs> and he leaves. And then, like the next episode. Batman takes a hairpin out of his belt and he gets out. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. a side thing. So well, the, the funniest thing about the- that for me was you're saying he was so confident in it. Meanwhile, you see like 30 marbles on the ground where they all missed every <laughs> shot. How is he so <laughs> confident with that last shot? Yes, I know. So basically what he does is he shoots and he knocks Duck Sue's marble into the, uh, into the, uh, into the pit and he loses yeah. the game. And of course yeah. he takes off and he tries to run out of the place and everything. And, Basically, he is he shot not by one guy, two guys. He's just basically assassinated. Mm-hmm. Not right. that the other guys weren't assassinated, but he's just a blaze of glory for this guy. So right. I guess that's yeah. why I didn't want to go out. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd run. I Puffy lost mm-hmm. the game. He Might was, as well. Yeah. I would just yeah. I will, I don't want Puffy to die, but I would like to just see the scene of him trying to get away after he <laughs> lost. <laughs> Exactly. There would be some overacting in that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we come down now to our, our, our hero, uh, Ji Hun and the old man. And this is again, this is a this is a gut wrenching scene. I, I don't think you can accuse this man of not being a tremendous actor in this particular piece, because basically what happens is he's he ends up starting to lose the game 
And, and by the way, they go in saying, uh, uh, "What's the uh, what's the term stuff uh, when you're, you're oh, when oh. they do this with the pinkies and oh, they're all like, is, basically uh, they're supposed to be ganbu, ganbu, they're ganbu." Which they're, means they're, they're basically yeah, Marble Brothers, essentially. Marble right? Brothers, yeah. exactly. Your Marble exactly. partner, you trust them. Yes. It's a strong yeah, connection. Which, exactly. So they're brothers. And yes. anyway, they go in and um, Jihan's losing the game. And as Stoff correctly says, he starts to exploit uh, the old man's memory because the memory, his dementia, his brain tumor, whatever. So the old man will say, oh, how many did I bet? And at one point, um, he says... Uh, he says, says odd, odd, and then the guy, right? then he forgets and what he, he said. And he says he, even. He yeah. what he said, and then he knows he's realizing he's lost the game, but he says he said even, right? So mm -hmm. anyway, it gets to the point where it's one. The, what, the old man has one marble left. The time is ticking down, and the old man takes off and says he doesn't want to play anymore, and he pretends he's looking for his old house, whatever. And uh, he pretends, or is is he in we, dementia? We, we he, don't he's know. He's in some point. type of alternate phase, but yeah. at the end of it, he comes out and he says, "Hey, listen." And he, he realizes he basically it reveals that he's been playing Ji Hun the whole time, and he knows that he's being tricked. But mm -hmm. he also realizes that he's an old man. He's got this brain tumor, and Ji Hun should live and he should go right. So. Yeah, well um, basically, he basically ends up giving up the marble and he basically, and the other, the other woman, by the way, who essentially commits suicide ends up thanking her partner for playing a good game and having a lasting memory. And at the end of the game, you know, G, G Hun's walking out of the hut and you hear the gunshot. You don't see it. And well, uh, very powerful. They, they say, uh, he says basically, um, you, you know, that you've been tricking me this whole time so that he was aware yeah. he was, I guess, faking the dementia but that he, all he had to do was ask him for the marble because they're a ganbu, which is like the marble. Brothers. Yes, he would have yes, given it anyway, true. right? Um, so there are a couple things to unpack there, I guess, because uh, obviously they have such a strong bond, but Ji Hun is willing to exploit this guy's sickness, at least seemingly at the time. Mm -hmm. But to me, at least that's still not as bad as Song Wu. I agree. He's no, no, no. losing the game and he completely tricks this noble person into thinking that mm -hmm. they can get out together and he also like we didn't mention he gives them a uh, he puts a bunch of rocks in a satchel and tells them that's yeah. what the marbles are yeah uh, but it's as despicable uh, of what what jihan did again mm -hmm. i think in in the same situation we'd all kind of have to do the same thing it's particularly when it's an older and man it's not an equal to you it's a guy who's probably not going to live long and anyway, a guy right? who's told you he's there he's there pretty much to die like, yes. I think it, maybe it's easier to do it to yourself in your mind. And I think the whole point of this is uh, the old man knows this as well. And the old man mm -hmm. is just saying, hey, we're friends. You took care of me this whole time. You could have, like, I would do this exactly. for you. Yeah. you didn't but have, he, and that, and he that's didn't what do saying. that, though. Well, I he think he did it almost. Him. He did it like. Well, he almost did morality it. lesson. It was exactly. a morality he was lesson. teaching him a lesson. That's really what it felt like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, m my thing, that's obviously the point. Do you guys buy that, like that he was faking the dementia all the time? Do you think he showed uh, no, himself on purpose? Uh, I don't Do you think, think he that he had a purpose. long, long end game like that where he was planning this the whole time. No, I mean he. No. he I mean, I, I, he couldn't unless he had been through the Squid Games before. He wouldn't have known what was coming. No, I think it's a combination of both. Ooh. I think he 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 somehow he had a, a breakdown. But I mean, listen, unfortunately. Um, well, from what I know of dementia, you know, you, you, you can snap in and out, right? So uh, it's possible that during the game he did kind of forget but was kind of conscious. It's almost like how they described it. Is you re, you read it, you're not necessarily there, but you feel like you're dreaming everything. You know what I mean? So Yeah. He, uh, yeah I don't right? know if you can recall from within those episodes. I think he, his was – he made it seem at the end like he was faking it the whole thing, time. So right? what do you think, Stuff? What do you uh, think he was the winner one? I, I actually, I, that's why I kind of don't believe that scene just because I don't think, I think it was done more just uh, to take us on this ride that we believe that he he's being taken advantage of. Um, I just don't think it's very realistic that he could have been faking it the whole time like that. Interesting. There's a lot of things about the show. Let's be honest. That so one, there's <laughs> one couple, there's one couple that piqued my interest that we haven't touched on yet. And I okay. don't know what happens to them. And so maybe something happens later, but there was the married couple. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Shared off together into everything. And when they yeah. found out that the game was marbles and one wins, one loses, they had that kind of moment of just staring at each other. Like, what do we do? Mm. And I don't, do you know, we don't uh, see them again, do we? In the, in I don't that, remember I don't seeing know. them again. Do you know? Well, say anything, James. Uh, <laughs> James? Do you know that they won the previous? I will come to your games? house, James. <laughs> James, you're about to join the real Squid Games, brother. Uh, <laughs> there's a line that Morgan Freeman gives to Brad Pitt in uh, the movie Seven, uh, but I'm not going to say it because it's too revealing. Look, uh, well, look, I, followers I think- of the movie Seven would uh, would be familiar probably with it. That uh, applies to the situation here. That I, it's, it's very hard for me to do this with knowing what's yeah. going to happen the next episode i can't wait till the last episode of the rubber squid podcast where we're all on the same page because yes. i feel so superior to you right now because i have so much mm-hmm. knowledge that you don't have that's fair anyway. um all right very well done lester that's is that, that was basically the end of the episode right that yes. was basically yes. the end of, listen i can't take full credit for that stop had excellent notes here as well thank you very much stop appreciate mm-hmm. it. well you actually just you just read stops notes off of a little <laughs> teleprompter i i added okay. my own inflections as well you did he was, really you, good you, you do have you do have an excellent uh, excellent question here uh stop who are the vips like mm-hmm. that's a great question you know i think we'll it find is? out in the episode called the vips fourth is that yeah. next episode uh, stuff. I don't know. Look at the I believe episode so. I order. It is. I, yeah, I think that's I think the so. title that came up for the next one. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I was like, what do you guys, I, who do you think are the VIPs? I think, I think the it's VIPs the previous are, winners. I think it's a bunch of rich people from, uh, the U S of a who are coming in to gamble on Korean lives. I believe wow. you. I'm going to one up you here. Stop. I think that's absolutely red. And the leader of that band of U S people is Michael Jordan. Really? <laughs> Michael, this would be an amazing show. Would be a good twist. Would be a good twist. I'm looking forward to it now. Oh, what uh, if it was Ed Aaron, Kar- Aaron Karolnik? He's a big gambler. <laughs> and Carlo Koliakovo. <laughs> Koliakovo would be broke by Taylor. the end of the first game. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting guest stuff. Uh, no, no. Well, it, well it off, just feels no, just so, so far we we also only know that they're they're only coming in for I guess the last game it would seem like if the VIPs yeah. aren't there yet so all these other games were just to set up this one last thing. Does right. anyone else, by the way, see within this whole show a very uh, very strong parallel to another movie series that happened here in North America? Yeah, in Murder time? Island. No, <laughs> no. What, what are you talking about, Saw? No, 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 not Saw. Hunger Games. Oh, yeah. This, is, yeah, this yeah. essentially is Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And with the VIPs coming in, I feel like it's even more so that. But yeah. obviously, yeah. I don't know that yet. No, you oh, said... They're, they're def- I know Puffy's got to go take his son to the dentist in a couple minutes here, so uh, let's get to a couple of the other things here. You, you mentioned uh, somebody, one of our... Roger K. Marshall, one of our listeners, said yes. that it couldn't really murder Island... Uh, Though Puffy has claimed that they been, stole it. Yeah, that this guy wrote the show off. eight years ago. Here's the thing, though. In 2008. Pa- Puffy oh, wrote Murder Island 12 years ago. He just didn't tell us about it. Until well, no. no. Do you guys remember when we were in South Korea at that bar and we were talking yes. about Murder Island? Loud, loudly. Yes. And there was in that guy. 2007. Listening. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. now it's, it's even more, more, uh, more likely that this is where the ideas came from. That's true. Uh, one more thing I sent. I don't know if you guys read this morning uh, from the New York Times today. Uh, I saw that. That the, um, someone uh, came up with a cryptocurrency called, what was it, Squidcoin? Squidcoin. Uh, Squidcoin. Uh, that cryptocurrency, they put it on the market for a penny. And at some point it went up to, I don't know, $65 or $140. Really? And then it suddenly, it suddenly disappeared and went to zero because the basically the, whoever came up with this coin they took all the money from everyone invested and they just bolted for some oh. island off of South Korea. <laughs> well played. Hmm. Which happens a lot, and which is why I'm terrified of cryptocurrencies because... Listen, uh, I, I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what, I have a friend of mine that in the early days of cryptocurrency, we were talking about it, he's a guy I've been hockey with, and he, uh, he, said, he made an excellent point. He said, you know, so I, don't, I don't believe in any of this cryptocurrency because you can mine it, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can mine mm-hmm. it. And if yeah. you can do that, then like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's difficult and very expensive to mine, though. I, I, think I would say, the, I would say the greater uh, come back. 
Oh, like, next time. We'll see you in two days for the, uh, the, the edition of the Rumble. Yeah, yeah. Wear, wear, wear something different clothes. for once. Wear the same clothes. Yeah. I'm going to wear the exact same stuff. See you, boys. That's Puffy, everyone. That's yeah. Puffy, everyone. He's uh, taking uh, young uh, Barrett or Austin to the dentist. Uh, you'll see him on the episode. Uh, as is a, there as a kid, by, hold on, hold on. As a kid, by the way, I would much rather go and participate in the Squid Games than go to the dentist. Wow. Good At least you got a chance. <laughs> would, uh, do you think that Squid Games are going to pop up? We talked about a little bit this last week and doing our own uh, TSN version, but uh, do you think that squid games will become a, a thing now where like, you know, kids in schoolyards are playing squid games. Oh, obviously that's that's, that's happening death. already. Uh, so yeah. uh, I saw one of our, of my friends that's a teacher over the weekend and mm-hmm. they said that one of the problems in the schoolyard they have now is the kids are playing red light, green light. But mm-hmm. at the end, when people move, they pretend they're shooting them with semi-automatic <laughs> weapons. So, yeah, great, great. Uh, one at great. recess. <laughs> great. Mm-hmm. It would be fun though, because I would just fake the death scene, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly <laughs> what that, we do. That would yeah. be amazing. Uh, so now, are you guys? Uh, again, I ask this every week because I I've forgotten my emotions. Are you like? Are you anticipate? Are you oh, into I'm the into Squid it, Game yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm you're into anticipating it. what's going to happen. It's a pretty interesting show, right? There's a lot of, like you guys were saying, I think there's a lot of, there's plot holes here and there are similarities. Like if, if I'm not going to say, I don't want to give away anything going forward, but you, you know, we have an idea where it's all going to an extent, right? As mm-hmm. far as the, who the characters are going to make it for this and this and that, and the other thing. And, but it's, it's just different enough that it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think part of some of the plot holes and stuff like that is some of them might be, um, you know, the translation. The other part might be a bit of a culture gap as well. Like I we, think so. Yeah, things to happen sure. a certain way where uh, over there they don't. They happen differently. Uh, people's responses might be different. So I think that's part of it too. I just, I just think like the Hunger Game things popped into my head, and it's because here it's such a it's a celebrated movie franchise. Whereas when squid gate came out here, it was almost like this crazy foreign thing where they're just killing. Oh my gosh. It's nothing. Oh my goodness. And that's what really struck me as I'm watching is this, this isn't something I really haven't seen before. And that's kind of what people have been making out to be. And I'm wondering how much of that response is simply because it's a foreign film and we're not actually thinking about how similar it is to other things like it that we've seen. So, yeah. Well, I guess the other yeah. Go ahead. That's Sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, I, I hadn't seen the Hunger Games, so this is completely okay. new to me. So mm-hmm. I, yeah. I think maybe the the only fundamental difference is that Hunger Games is set in this you know yes. weird sort of future alter version of the future, whereas Squid Dystopian, Game is yeah. real time and in South Korea makes, makes a little bit different, I suppose. Which yeah. makes Hunger Games easier to digest as a person, I guess. When you don't right. believe that people are this desperate right now, somewhere financially, right? It feels like science fiction in one of them, and yes, uh, an exaggerated view of reality in the yeah. other one, right? But very similar themes. It's fascinating. Okay, boys. Well, you guys uh, can uh, go off and watch the next two episodes. Yes. Two episodes. What are we at? We're watching seven and eight. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Lester McLean will be recapping seven and eight next week. This is mm-hmm. the next week will be the penultimate. Another un, un, uh, underused word, penultimate edition That's of really the Rubber time. Squid podcast because we only have, so we have two weeks left. Um, now, I might be a little loopy. I have my sport hernia surgery on Monday. Mm. Uh, whether we take this Monday or Tuesday next week, maybe we should do it Monday while I'm still drugged up right I out of the surgery. That, that, I think that'd be excellent podcast material. Do you, do you have the ability to watch the episode during your surgery? Wow. 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 While, while I'm being operated on? Yeah. I don't think it's a local freeze, buddy. I think I'm out and under, but I'm not Com- sure. Oh, completely. You should be I don't know control. about that. I, maybe it's maybe it's not. Maybe it's just uh may want to find when out. I had my when I had my colonoscopy last year, I wasn't out at all. That was just couldn't you don't want feel to be anything. That. No, I was having a conversation with the doctor while she was probing me. It was weird. It was really weird. Uh, anyway. Uh, that wasn't uh, uh, has has anything to do with the Squid Game episode. It's just a, <laughs> they do it. They no, do yes, an eight part, really nine part series on my colonoscopy. Yeah, it's just weird. <laughs> Pro- probably time to end the podcast. Uh, hopefully, uh, Puffy will return uh, for the Maybe. actual uh, Rubber Boots podcast, brought to you by our friends at BetSafe.net. Should we do like uh, 
odds to win the Squid Game, or did we do that already in an earlier episode? Like BetSafe.net odds to win Squid Game. BetSafe.net. From this point on, right now, hmm. just right now, you guys should just let's go. Uh, so <laughs> there's Jihan, there's uh, Doksu in the gang, there's the girl, there's Sangwoo. Uh, you pretty much know it's going to become from one of those people, or is let it me, the husband let, and let, wife? Let me, let's simplify this. Let's wait. Let, I suggest, I propose that we're going to do that. We wait, we do episode seven and eight, and then we see who's left for episode nine. Because obviously the field's going to be what if there's only, What if there's what only if, two left by then? Yeah, or if, well, what if episode nine is just the aftermath. Correct. No, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't um, think so. Well, I'll throw it out there just for me. I think Jihan is the odds on favorite simply because obviously we know the most about him. He's presented as the head character. Although this does feel like a show. Even he... odds? Even odds on, on Jihan? Or so, even uh, more? Are we saying Jihan versus the field? Jihan versus the field. Who do you take right now? I think Jihan's the favorite. I would take the field, though. I would take the field because I think the writers get creative at one point and kill off the main character. Okay, so, so stop I'm looking, taking the I'm field not looking at from, from the, the game. Net I'm looking at how it's re- written. So I guess yes. Les- Lester, Jihan, or the field right now, you got to pick. Jihan, no question. You're taking Jihan. Okay. Interesting. Jimmy, Interesting. Uh, I got, I'm going to take, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put can. all my money on it. I will see you next week. Thank you for joining us on the betsafe.net rubber split podcast. What you're watching? Just between you and me, what you're streaming on your TV, let me see. What you're watching? Action, drama, comedy, what you're streaming on your TV. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight?